Should we decriminalize homicide and focus on, quote, harm reduction? Three years ago in 1950, the murder rate in the United States was 5.3 per 100,000 citizens. In 2019, it was 6.0 per 100,000 citizens. Currently, there's about 7,700 homicide detectives in the United States. Have we been fighting a 70-year losing battle in the war on homicide? What if I told you as a homicide detective that you've been a failure because the homicide rate has actually gone up in this country over the past 70 years? Should we decriminalize homicide and focus on, quote, harm reduction or some other method of reducing murders in this country? A second point, which may hit home a little more with you, or you can expand on it uh, a little more just based on your background and your expertise. In 1950, 22 automobile deaths per 100,000 people in the United States. In 2021, 13 automobile deaths per 100,000 people. The biggest drop in that whole time was 1974. I think it went down by 17 or 18 percent that one year. What was it in 1974 that you could recall that caused such a significant change in highway deaths in the United States? I remember something that happened. And of course, it was the 55 mile an hour speed limit that exactly. was imposed by the federal government, which I, a firm believer and supporter of the Constitution, looking back, think was unconstitutional, but that's for a different show. <laughs> but there's something very interesting about that, Bill. I remember going to, ironically, retired California Highway Patrol chief. I remember going to traffic school for a ticket I received in college. One of the exhibits that the instructor in that class used was a chart about the reduction of traffic-related deaths across the United States. And he actually used that 1974 statistic. And what had been happening was even 15 or so years before and then after, like going into the mid 80s, was the steep decline in traffic deaths. So I'm not saying that the 55 mile an hour speed limit imposition had nothing to do with traffic related deaths, but it was certainly part of a much larger trend, which was more related to increased technology and braking in mm -hmm. tires, in a uh, crash or crunch, you know, research of, of vehicles, things like this, safety glass, all of these things have been reducing deaths, uh, automobile related deaths in the first place. Again, 55 mile hour speed limit may or may not have contributed, but it certainly was part of a larger downward trend. That was the point I was making right there. We talked about other harm reduction techniques in the uh, highway safety space. And you touched on some of them. We went from lap belts to shoulder belts. We uh, had crumple zones in cars. We had other supplemental restraint systems. Airbags came out. Vehicle warning systems came out. So there were a lot of different things that happened over that time that contributed to, quote, harm reduction. There is some reason why there was that one giant drop in 1974. And... Many states had dropped their speed limit in anticipation of that law passing the year before. So right around that time, there was also, I guess you could say, just an awareness that speed kills. So what the point I'm making is you don't exclude the law enforcement piece or the lawmaking piece just because you have these other harm reduction things happening. Today, the speed limit's gone up. Why is that? Because as a society, we've we've been able to manage harm a little better with all these supplemental safety systems. So maybe we can change laws at this point. If we took away the speed limit, what do you think would happen to highway safety? Early on, there would be, it, it, it really would increase the number of traffic accidents. I mean, I think it's just logical because people are used to driving a certain speed. They've not been trained to drive faster and things like this, but I think there are circumstances where very high speed limits or, or none are, are relatively safe. I'll give you an example. In Germany, there are no speed limits on a large portion of the autobahns. I've driven on them. There's no speed limit. You have people going 100 miles an hour and you have twin turbo Mercedes going 160 miles an hour, literally out there. And the, the mileage death rate is lower 
than it is here in the United States. I say that for a reason. It may, may sound counterintuitive to, to the, the point that you and I are both making here about just reducing all barriers, but there's something very important is the culture in Germany related to driving going way back is driving safely where speed is only one factor in that. They are simply better drivers. Sorry. And the laws applying to driver's licenses and to violations of the law related to driving are immense. So just like there are no speed zones in a large portion of the German autobahns, there are other places where the speed limit is enforced to the mile per hour. And if you violate certain laws, you lose your driver's license either for a long time or permanently. There is no gray area, but this does relate to law enforcement and the culture of drug mm -hmm. use. I want to get into that here in the United States. There is a relation to not only what's available to you, but what you see as a responsibility to yourself, your own behavior. That's a great tie in there. When you talk about the culture, is it law enforcement's responsibility to change culture? Have we burdened law enforcement too much? When I brought up the example of homicide detectives and I said the murder rate's gone up in the past 70 years, are our homicide detectives failures? Have we fought a losing battle in the war on homicide? And I say that honestly because how much impact the, do those homicide detectives have on the culture of violent crime in this country and the culture of murder or why murders are occurring. And I would say, in my opinion, none, really none. And I would say the same holds true in the drug space. Are we putting the burden on law enforcement? Is our expectation or is our benchmark that law enforcement is actually going to change the drug culture in this country? Or is the benchmark what, in my opinion, it should be just as it should be for homicide detectives or California Highway Patrol officers. Should the benchmark really be reduction of harm rather than uh, a change of culture? Let me say this. Yeah. Is that like with many problems, circumstances, the answer, the solution is not a, a it's not a one button solution. There can be multiple factors in, in addressing the issue and solving the problem. The drug problem in this country, to me, it's a multifaceted solution. And the word solution does not mean that we're going to ever end drug use or drug trafficking in this country. I think anybody would, that says that we can do that, they're ignorant or they're foolish or both. Just as you so well articulated earlier that murders and other crimes for me, driving under the influence. I mean, we have task forces. It's all they do is to go out and look for the impaired driver. Are we ever going to fully eliminate the knucklehead having six beers and get behind the wheel of his or her car? No, but the point is we don't quit.